by being trained in righteousness, the word of God is preparing you to know what God would do. Because by studying the word of God, you're going to see how God intervened into the instrumentality of mankind. How God dealt with sin, how God dealt with relationships, how God intended for it to work. So why do you need a good Bible? It needs to be a priority. You know, when I got a job, going back to measurements and talking about weights and measurements and being able to rightly dividing the truth, I got a job at, uh, when I was in college, it was at Westchester. And, you know, I had one of those dads who I got the Pell Grant and all that kind of stuff. And dad said, I am so stinking proud of you, son. You know, you're going to college, but I know you don't have everything you need. So get a job, you bum, and I'll, you'll thank me in 10 years. So what did I do? I went to NBF. After five interviews, I got a job. And I got a job in sheet finishing on the midnight shift. And I would go to work every night at 11 o'clock and get done at 8, 8.30 in the morning and then go to class. It was interesting. I knew how to work hard, but I knew very little about technology. What did they do there? Actually, they did all types of bindings and formings and of chemical reactions and making stuff that was going to be cut into something that made somebody else would take to make into something else. And in sheet finishing, we did two things. We made copper, copper uh, embossed sheeting for the computer industry that had a ceramic back, and I had to work on a shear. One of those things that, you know, imagine the little paper cutter thing that you have in your office and your, everyone says, be in respect of it. Well, I had the big honking dude that was, you know, 22 feet long that you're using to cut tolerances on this little piece of thing like this, you know, because Lord knows one day you might have to cut a big sheet, but we're going to only let you cut a little sheet, you know. And then I, I worked on a sanding machine in an asbestos department for the oil industry where we made uh, asbestos parts because asbestos parts lasted longer than they would catch fire, you know. And I worked in a space suit in 100 degree temperatures all night long, and I lost 90 pounds in a year. You know? But here's the thing. I learned what tolerances were. I understood, and all of a sudden I was able to prioritize measurement. I said, what in the world does that have to do with the Word of God? I was able to make reasonably good decisions before I got this job. By the time I was done, I was setting production records with highly, what's the word I'm looking for? Accurate. Accurate tolerances. I learned something. I learned to trade. I learned to produce something. But I had to come under a schoolmaster. I had to be instructed. I had to be taught. I had to learn something. But you see, when you come to Christ, you're capable of reasonably good decisions. But you might be completely unexperienced and untrained in life. The Word of God will unlock that for you. Because all of a sudden, you see, there are circumstances in your lives where you can't afford the price of admission. There's some things you can't afford to experience, to go through, to learn. That's where the Word of God provides you the shortcut, where all of a sudden you get in here and you start looking at how Paul dealt with something and how Peter dealt with something, how Jesus dealt with Peter with his rebellion. You know? All of a sudden, you can shortcut your way through growing in a spiritual dynamic by reading the Word of God. That you don't have to go through it and then have the sin consequences in your life to deal with it. They're going to haunt you for the rest of your life. Listen, there's stuff that you go through that will haunt you for the rest of your life. There's sin that has a, that has a bar that will cling on to you. Now, whether you get your heart right or not, the rest of your life it has done irreparable damage to you that you will never escape. But, especially for young people, you get in the Word of God, and you start seeing the junk that somebody else went through, all of a sudden it's easier for you to digest. It's easier for you to understand. All of a sudden you've added to your faith. You've grown exponentially. You're able to understand and make good decisions in your life without having to go through the negative. Ooh. We were inexperienced in what he wanted, his will, his desires. We were untrained in his type of righteousness. 
we lack the sure-footedness of character because of our sin in our lives and the world around us. We didn't understand the importance of God's measurement and his tool for our lives. We may have read it, but we have never used it to its fullest. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them with your word. In other words, change them, mold them, remake them with scripture. Fingers don't always work good in the morning. You know, there was a time when uh, in Kentucky, did you know in Kentucky they actually had a law that allowed the posting of the um, Lord's Prayer and the Ten Commandments? Um, hear that. The state of Kentucky endorsed the posting of the Ten Commandments, which means they recognized that the Word of God had the ability to transform the character of the people who read it. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and to the joints and to marrow. It is discerner of the thoughts and tense of the heart. The simple matter is the fact that the Word of God will empower you. Now, David said in the Psalms, the Word of God is a lamp unto feet and light into my way. How do we get to the place where we know what Bible should we be using? Because there's a lot of good ones out there. But there's also a lot of Bibles out there that have issues. Um, I have an article that I'm going to work from the for the rest of this message from David Wallace. David Wallace is professor of Greek uh, and New Testament studies at, at Dallas Theological Seminary. I also found some really good, there's a translation continuum, it's out in the back, which I suggest you get. And then there's a chart of Bible translations, the good, the bad, the ugly, based upon a 2 Corinthians 10, how it reads in all the different translations. Okay? Take those two. Because I want you to, you need to have some Bibles. You need to understand how those Bibles will interact in your life and how you can use them. Because you see, there's two, there's two wave bands of Bibles. There's the word-for-word -word Bible at, at the far end, and then there's the thought-for-thought -thought Bible at the other end. Word-for-word -word Bible is going to be much more archaic, much more in its wording. It's going to be a little more difficult to understand because it's the translation is holding truer to what the original language is. Because anytime you transfer, transfer one language to another, they're, they're, you're dealing with idioms, you're dealing with culture. And it's difficult sometimes to express exactly, I mean, for example, in Greek, what's there six words for the word love? In English, there's one, love, really. So it takes a little bit to translate the meanings of these words. Well, the thought for thought is much more structured. It's much more, it holds closer to wherever possible, as much as possible to the original wording. Whereas the thought for thought, if there's an expression or a phrase, they're going to they're going to come up with the best possible way to say it so it's readable. <coughs> so you have these two spectrums. And actually, you need Bibles at both ends of the spectrum. Because you need a rock solid study Bible or two preferably with a wide margin so you can make notes, so you can put down if, as you learn something, as God teaches you something, so you have it to study with. And then you have you need Bibles that you can pleasurably read because you want to be reading through the Word of God. So you need both, both ends, okay? 